Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of Type D chopper in MATLAB. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a Type D chopper. It is also referred to as two quadrant Type B chopper. Why is it also called in that way? It's very simple. It operates in two quadrants, that is first and fourth quadrant. So the voltage can be positive or negative, but the current is always positive. So how do we justify this statement? When CH1 and CH2 are turned on simultaneously, consequently the current flows in this particular path uh, from the source to the load. V out will be positive, I out will be positive. So that concludes it operates in first quadrant. Now, if CH1 and CH2 are turned off, and the load that is used is uh, having an inductive load. Uh, uh, so what happens uh, in that case, the energy that is stored will be discharged through D2 and D1 in this particular path. And consequently, the current still remains in the same direction, but the voltage will be reversed, isn't it? So it will be plus and minus here. As a result, it will be operating in the fourth quadrant. So uh, this is how we will be justifying that it operates in first and fourth quadrant respectively. Once this is understood, let's go uh, to MATLAB and start our simulation over there. So let's go to... All right, here we are. Click on the Simulink library browser and search for the blocks that we want. We want PowerView block at the first place. So search for it and add that block. We need to see how the voltage is uh, and how the waveform of current is. So add these blocks first, measure them, and then we'll give it to the scope. Once that is done, we will be requiring a DC voltage source. So search for DC voltage source and choose the ones that are there in black uh, for our simulation purpose with respect to power electronics. And the ones that are there in blue are generally used for signals and systems amplifiers operational amplifiers applications as such once these two blocks are added uh, we will be requiring a MOSFET uh, so search for MOSFET scroll a little down choose the one that is there in black add this block and once this is done we will be requiring a pulse generator block in order to trigger these MOSFETs so search for pulse you will get it right at the top over here add this block as well uh, apart from that we also require a diode so search for diode and uh, scroll a little down you will be getting it right at the bottom over here we'll be adding that block and we'll be requiring a series RLC branch uh, which can be later changed to an inductive load according to our requirement add that block as well um, apart from that we will be requiring a scope in order to see how the waveform looks like so search for scope and add that block as well I hope we have added all the blocks that we want with respect to our circuit so we can place them in appropriate position so that uh, we can get started with the circuit diagram um, the voltmeter can be the power cube block is generally placed at the top so once this is done um, we will be rotating this in this particular fashion and uh, ensure that the measurement uh, port is disabled by double clicking on it we'll be doing the same with respect to the diode uh, you can rotate them by pressing ctrl r disable the measurement uh, port for both of them ctrl c and then ctrl v place them uh, in diagonally opposite position with respect to each other similarly we'll be doing that for diode as well uh, so once this is done we will be connecting according to our circuit connection in this particular fashion so uh, to in order to enclose our circuit we'll be connecting the train to the diode end and uh, the supply is given at this particular point uh, we'll be connecting the source with respect to this diode we'll be using a load at this point uh, and care has to be taken uh, we will be choosing an inductive load just to show that how freewheeling action takes place and its value let it be default it doesn't matter uh, so we will be choosing uh, a current measurement block and it is measured from this point uh, connected in series if you have to measure the current it is always to be connected in series isn't it so that's the reason we'll be connecting with respect to the inductor and once this is done we will be measuring the voltage across the load at this point so connect this uh, voltmeter at this point uh, over here and give it to the scope and uh, similarly we'll be doing it for the current measurement block as well once both of these are done we'll be entering the parameters we'll be choosing a supply voltage of 24 volt uh, dc and uh, double click on the pulse generator block choose an amplitude to be equal to 10 um, time period can be 0 0.02 seconds it's very simple 1 by 50 is 0 0.02 based on that i've taken uh, you can try it for different time periods as well it is just how the waveform looks like at the output whether it is properly visible or not I've chosen the pulse width to be equal to 50%. Uh, it doesn't matter, you can try it for different pulse width as well, uh, just to see how uh, the waveform varies. But as a whole, 50% of the time, the two choppers CH1 and CH2 should be turned on. And that's the reason why I'm doing this. Remaining 50%, the freewheeling action takes place and consequently, D1 and D2 will be connecting. That's uh, our analogy be behind setting these parameters. Once this is done, we'll be clicking on OK. And uh, we have entered all the parameters. So give uh, the pulse generator block uh, to the gate terminals of both the choppers. The reason why we are not using NOT gate uh, in compared to type C chopper previously that is done, we 
want to trigger both CH1 and CH2 simultaneously. That is the reason why we will be giving the same pulse generator block to both the choppers. Once this is done, set the simulation time to 1 second because these are static loads and click on run. So uh, it does take a little uh, time to simulate. So be patient and uh, we'll be double clicking on the scope in order to see how the waveform looks like. So we can categorically separate them by using this particular option over here. So uh, this is the, if you carefully observe, we can zoom this particular portion to understand how the waveform is. So this is the voltage waveform and this is the current waveform. If you carefully observe, the voltage is positive at some point and goes to negative as well. Again, it goes to positive and goes to negative as well. If you see the current, it is always positive and then negative. Uh, at times it is zero because we don't have a huge amount of inductance chosen. If you choose, it will be uh, this zero portion can be eliminated as well but as a whole if you see current is always positive isn't it and voltage goes to positive and negative depending upon uh, how the choppers are turned on and turned off respectively so uh, based on this can we conclude that uh, voltage can be positive or negative whereas current is always positive and that's the reason why we say type d chopper operates in first and fourth quadrant i hope uh, this video gives you a clear understanding of how to simulate type d chopper in matlab in case you have any questions feel free to reach out if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Thanks for watching this video. Please do keep supporting.